Hello there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video all about how to pass your upcoming SBL exam and how to get 78 from a student who has passed the exam and funny enough got 78 on it as well. <laughs> but I'm delighted to welcome onto the channel today Hafsa, who's kindly taken the time to walk and talk us through her experience of the SBL exam and to share some tips that could help you with your upcoming exam. So Hafsa, feel free to introduce yourself. What's been your experience with SBL? Um, well, thanks for having me. Um, hopefully I can give some people a lot of insight. So the SBL exam, um, it's a long one. It's about, it's about a four hour exam. So, you know, make sure you're nice and full before the exam. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's again, along with all the strategic professional exams, it's very much written based. Um, mm. You're very, you're not expected to kind of calculate numbers aren't really the, the there's kind of sole focus in this exam. Um, I think the point, a lot of students, if they're doing an apprenticeship with this, it will be their final exam. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the purpose of it is to really make sure that the students taking the exam are ready to go off in the real world and express their opinions yeah. um, in a way that's professional and that's gonna benefit the company that they're in or you know their future studies. So um, it, was quite, it was quite a good exam to, to get into. Um, I, I like to waffle, I like to talk. So, you know, the fact that I can get my opinion through across in an exam um, was always a bonus for me. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I mean, first of all, you've got to be there for the full four hours because there's a lot of information to digest. You've got to be specific, relating it back to the scenario, all the sort of things that are expected at the strategic uh, level as well. But what's one of the main things that st stands out to you that, that's really important to passing this exam? Um, I think it's, again, um, structure to your answers. Uh, SBL is very heavily written. Um, you, it's four hours. You spend about 40 to maybe an act, 40 to maybe 60 minutes planning mm -hmm. your answer. And I think one of my key bits of advice would be to use that full 40 to 60 minutes planning. So really get to grips with how you want to answer each bit of, the, each bit of your requ um, requirements and just create a really good plan. Um, you know, the examiner's not going to see that plan. Make it clear that, you know, that is your plan. And once you've planned well, the answer becomes easy. Mm. Um, and I think for the students that are going to be sitting the exam, weirdly enough, I would say the plan is probably the most vital part into passing the exam. I have said plan a lot, I realise, in the last couple of sentences. But if you do your plan well your answers become easier. So the time pressure is mm. off answering well, your questions. It's the classic old adage, have to fail to plan. Exactly. Plan to <laughs> fail, I'm sure. But yeah. nobody watching this will uh, will be doing any of that. But I have a question because I get this asked quite a lot. Should you do the SBL exam by itself or with another exam? I mean, to get your 78, did you do it by itself or accompanied with another exam? So I did it on its own. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it would be good to do it on its own because, um, and ideally maybe last, because it's essentially all of your knowledge from and all your experience of the previous exams put into one. So it's not just about the content and past the exams, but it's how mm. do you react under that pressure and that time management. So you kind of, Great. Um, you know, you've built up the skill of time management, you've built up your skills of generally passing the strategic exams. The SBL is just the final bit of that. So I did it on its own, but you know, I'm sure those yeah. uh, oral uh, lessons are doing it with another one. <laughs> I, I would, I would highly recommend doing it by, by yourself. I mean, every time I mention it on the channel quite a lot, anytime I did two exams together, I failed one of them and yeah, it, it is so. just that pressure and there is a lot of information to digest in the yeah. SBL exam I mean what what's your best top tip for for going through all that information digesting the syllabus mm -hmm. and then having the tools to then put put putting it on paper to get the right marks so um you know don't focus so much on specific models and naming models and you don't get marks in this exam for naming a model or you know um you can say oh pestel will be a good a mm. good use for this but actually don't don't name that just do it so 
do your political um, aspects, do your economical aspects, just lay it out. So if you know your, if you know how to structure an answer around a model, great, but don't name the model and then think that's where you've got your marks. Mm. Um, and then once you've done that, the hard part is really um, reading your case study. So obviously for a lot of students watching, I'm not sure kind of which students are still on paper, but it is a computer-based exam. Yeah. So, you know, it, again, in those 40 minutes, and when you're doing mocks at home, learn how to highlight the important bits of a scenario, Good. learn how to block out the bits that don't matter, because there's a lot of information that they give you in your mm. case study. Yeah. Um, but just as you're reading your scenario, think about what models you can apply to it. So if, mm. if you're get given a scenario about, I don't know, an airport that, and they want to expand, then there will be areas in that answer, in your scenario that are political and social and you know legal. So think about the models as you do it, oh, as you read the scenario. Completely agree. There'll, there'll be little buzzwords or certain phrases yeah. you go, oh, that, that's sort of environmental. Yeah. And it's, you've got to sort of put, put, put all the pieces of the jigsaw together and go, hang on. I think they're trying to tell me something here that, 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 that they're putting that information there because they want you to use it. That's the key exactly. thing yeah. on there. And the other question I usually get to that SPL is, um, what if English isn't actually your first language? Because there's a lot of information to digest and we touched on highlighting. Uh, have you got any top tips on that? Or like myself, I went to, to, to college and, and to classes with students from, from different backgrounds. Uh, and English maybe wasn't their, their first language. I mean, what advice did you have for, for students then? I think it's just about knowing that, yeah, it's a time pressured exam, but you have enough time to read the scenario. So it's like you said, there'll be buzzwords in there. If you see that there's something about a government, just highlight it and just mm. take it slowly. As long as you have an answer for, you know, at least as long as you have a structure to an answer for each scenario, you're going to get marks somewhere so i wouldn't panic if if english isn't your first language um you know as james and i have just said just highlight where you can and and just you know with your plan use references to what might be familiar to you in your plan yeah. not not um, not one strategy fits all so exactly it, it, yeah. if if english isn't your first language or <laughs> i wasn't particularly very good at writing or was, i'm very mm. quick at typing either but I was quite good at the planning side. So I, I would go through it and I'd be trying to be quite precise with my answers, referring back to the company names, really understanding it. So find out what your process is. And then when you're reviewing your marks, this is the other thing I always say about the strategic papers, be really strict on would I, when you review your answers, would I actually give myself a mark if I was the marker on this? Yeah. yeah. And if you ask yourself that difficult question, you're going, you know what, I really could have been more specific there or I could have added this extra point. And if I do that more often, then my marks are only going to go one way. Yeah, exactly. And another thing I would like to say on that is um, in terms of, you know, writing and typing, you don't get marked down for spelling. So, mm. you know, if you're panicking about how to spell a specific word and English isn't your first language. Don't worry. The examiner is most likely they'll know what you mean mm. um, if you can articulate in that in the best way you can. Yeah. They don't mark you for grammar. So. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> and uh, coming on to a different area of SBL, but it's something to really help you out. So feel free to chip in as well. It's a case of using the requirement to structure your answer. And we've touched on key words, but you've got to be so careful the way they word it. There might be one part of the requirement, which could be six to eight marks. And then there's a little and or a part two or and so many students yeah. fall short that it's about a 50 percent pass rate but i find that students who answer all the requirements and pick out the key aspects and go right i've got to i've got to make environmental points i've got to make ethical points and you should look at your answer and say have i answered the full requirement on there i mean what 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 would be your thoughts on that from your experience yeah i think um that's a really good point. A lot of the requirements sometimes are split into two. And what I always mm. like to do is on a question um, in my plan, I would separate that out. So if you've got a question that says evaluate and discuss, I would mm. in my plan, I would have evaluate this and then I would just enter in my plan. And then the next requirement is discuss. So then I know that I'm at least touching on both bits. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's actually a really good point to make. There's notice where you can see ands and you know as well you know where you've got two separate requirements 
Oh, it's one of those things that I remember reviewing some of my old work and they're going, oh, my word, this was a 20 mark question. And I think I've answered about six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and completely missed it. But it comes yeah. down to if you're not doing, you've got to do the, the questions to time. Now, I know there's obviously the analysing of the of the case study, but go on about the, one, the usual 1.8 minutes per mark. And, and be really strict to it as well, because I mean, how did you get on with time management in this exam, Hafsa? Um, do you know what? I, because I practiced beforehand, I was actually okay with time management. And I know that, and this is, this actually goes to what I said earlier in a sense that I practice, you know, that's all the skills learned from the previous exams. Mm. So I, um, would tend to actually put a little bit more pressure on myself and I would do it when I do the mocks at home and I would maybe, I think for this exam, sometimes they say two minutes per mark include mm -hmm. kind of, but actually work when I do my mocks, I like to work to less than that. So maybe yeah. 1.6 minutes a mark, just to, just to see how far you can kind of get with that. And if you do want to work that way. Um, but timing was, I think it was, it's, it's a long time, but it goes by quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but you just have to practice the mocks go on to the past papers, you know, ACC have those papers. So just practice the mocks outside of the exam and yeah. under time pressure. Oh, completely agree. And I know some providers, uh, I don't know if you actually use them, but uh, I can put a link to them below. And um, the little flick books and, and flick yeah. notes that, that really yeah. condense that big chunky text yeah. into, into nice little flicky areas. And I used to always amend them as well and sit there on on the train in the morning on the way to the exam did you ever use those it really condensed them down yeah oh my gosh when my sbl and i'm sure students watching when i got my sbl book it was just there is a lot of information but the little pocket notes yeah it condensed it massively and that's almost kind of all you really need for an exam like sbl is just the notes the small mm. flicky notes um because you don't need to know the models in extensive detail. You just need mm. to know what they're about and how to answer your question around it. Yeah. Um, so 100% advocate of those little pocket notes. Yeah, pocket notes good. And then the other ones I used was, were the exam kits where I used to say, right, this is, this is how CAT plan or BPP have written it. And then I used to do it in sort of, I still have them here. I mean, it's like show and tell now, red pen <laughs> or blue pen. It's like, oh, this yeah. is in, this is in James's yeah. world, how he described it. So I had the exam kit, the pocket notes, and I used to just write on them and, and say, look, if, if I, if this is the night before the exam or on the way to the exam, what is important on this page that I need to know underlined yeah. in my words on the side. Yeah. Saves you so much time. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent on there it's uh, it's one of those where the more the more practice you put in and the more knowledge you digest the, the more effective your answers come out i feel on this as well yeah yeah definitely nice nice i mean are there any uh, are any other final things that are, are leaping to the front of your mind half so that if you had to do sbl tomorrow you'd be telling yourself right i need to do this i've got to sort that out what what is what what's um, coming to your mind I would say make sure you know you know how you're going to plan the answer. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, like I said, you get forty. I think I spent sixty minutes on my plan rather than forty. Um, you know, practice. You know your time management on your plan. You learn how to make a good plan, and then answering the question is just basically extending, waffling mm -hmm. what your plan is, and it's so easy after that. And also checking out your examiner's reports um, is the examiner's reports on ACCA. Nice. I, yeah, there may yeah. be three, you know, there may be a few pages long, but honestly, it's got everything in there yeah. as to this is how students around the world uh, got on in the exam. This is where they went wrong. And this yeah. is what I, they'd recommend so that you don't do that on there. So yeah. no, completely agree. And the only final thing that comes to my mind, I've got to ask you on is that the way that it's structured now, where they've got four exams um, every year and you get the results and there's usually about a six to seven week window. Do you have enough time, in your opinion, to do when, from when you get the results to then say, right, I've got six and a half weeks, seven weeks to revise, learn the SBL syllabus. Is that enough time, in your opinion? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, obviously, if you adhere to the times and, you, you know, you do do a bit of studying either, you know, each night or every other night or at the weekends where you can, it is, it is enough time. Um, and I've said this through the whole video, but if you know how to plan for this exam, <laughs> you will pass it <laughs> i'm gonna to have to put plan in the title of this video somewhere aren't i that's it but everyone who's taking notes is there going plan 
plan if i don't plan then this isn't going to go well is it? <laughs> but, but if you want to get it you know into the 70s 78 in your case planning is just the way forward because it, it just structures it through and it, yeah. it, you know it, it, if you plan plan the work and work the plan then you'd be fine on it you should just follow yeah. through and, and yeah. you'll attempt all of those marks on there but uh, yeah. i've just got to say thank you again so much for your time for for coming on the channel sharing your insights everyone's been taking notes down as we go through but uh, if you've got any questions for Hafsa or myself, make sure you leave us a comment at the bottom. I love to read them. Hafsa, are you all right to come and, and answer any Absolutely. questions the guys have got? Absolutely, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, make sure you leave us, let us know where you're watching this around the world. Also, how you get on in the exam. Maybe you've failed it before, you've watched this. Could be the difference in, you know, it, it just getting that 50 plus, following it through. And uh, I mean, how's it feel to get 78 when you opened up the uh, the email, Hafsa? Oh, amazing! And I, it was my last exam, so I could. I was. I was. Uh, it was. It was a good one to end on. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> well, ending on that bombshell. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Cheers.